Okay, this piece um, is titled Strange World. Um, I painted it on the beach in California on Thanksgiving. I initially went out to paint pictures of the pretty California, Los Angeles Ocean, Santa Monica, and instead I uh, came up with this. I think it was because I was depressed being in, on the beach on Thanksgiving in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, those are angels taking off from the cliffs. I guess it's kind of the idea of escaping from, you know, once you get to the end of America on either coast, where do you go from there? You either swim in the water or you can fly if you have that capacity. Um, I kind of wish I never sold this piece because, I mean, it has a lot of meaning. I don't know where it is. But uh, I enjoyed painting it and did a whole series of them. But none were as good as that one, I think. Okay, this painting is called Sun Shower. And um, I guess there's a fine line between um, inspiration and just ripping something off. But <laughs> this was really inspired by um, a song by David Gilmore called Coming Back to Life. Um, and there's a great line in there called Outside the rain fell dark and slow <clears throat> While I pondered on this dangerous but irresistible pastime I don't know why I love that line so much And uh, in the end he says I took a heavenly ride through our silence I knew the waiting had begun And headed straight into the shining sun I don't. I love that song, absolutely love it And I have done a lot of paintings to it And we'll do some more Um coming back to life which i think is what happens after a nice rainstorm or after a winter um, regardless okay this piece is the sleeping sun it's uh ink uh gold leaf and watercolor on paper and um i have no idea what it means i just wanted i had the uh idea to uh, what if the sun was under the ground? And I wanted to see what a gold leaf sun looked like because I saw a silver leaf sun in an old Japanese scroll, which I loved. Um, and again, I don't really know the meaning of this, but um, that uh, sometimes means sometimes that means you're coming from the right place when you have no idea what you're doing. I guess you want to be a little bit over your head in the water when you're working. And that's where you make discoveries, I think. Or not. Who knows? Okay, this piece is um, one of my Lost Souls series. Um, and these people, I initially thought they were in purgatory, but then I read about purgatory. I don't think it's a bad place. It's where you wait, supposedly, between heaven and hell. It's like a holding pen. But I think these people um, are in the afterlife, and they're not in a good place because they screwed up on this planet. I always had this crazy fear of hell as a kid. I still do. I have dreams of hell. Um, and I painted these out of nowhere when I had needed a bunch of work for a show. Just made them up out of nowhere. And... uh I never thought I'd sell one. People seem to like them. I don't know why. They scare me. <laughs> People buy them and uh, hang them on their walls. But I uh, paint a lot of these lost souls. Uh, this painting and, uh, I made, uh, um, it was Christmas Eve, and I was heading out to Long Island to family, and um this painting was wet, so I couldn't wrap it. And uh, I was going to give it to, I don't know, my brother. I always give him paintings. And, uh, this homeless guy in Penn Station just started crying when he saw it. And I was in the Christmas spirit, had a couple of wines in me. <laughs> and um, I just gave it to him. And uh, he had such a smile on his face. I always wonder what happened to that guy. But... I wanted to give the painting to my brother, but uh, if somebody cries over a piece, you know, how could you not give it to him? You know, so it was a it's a memory for life that one. I hope that guy is well. 
I once had a nightmare of the apocalypse that was so bad, I woke up sweating and crying. And basically, in short, the dream was evil had won over and I was uh, finding refuge in a church with uh, an old manager of mine from a restaurant, of all things, where I used to bartend. He was Catholic. I guess that's why he was in my dream. And we're in this church and it was this huge crucifix of Jesus that started to crumble and fall apart that was just floating and then we took the bones and the remains of the crucifix and we threw it in this huge hole and later years later I found this picture which was the exact image that I had of throwing the pieces into a hole I don't know what this picture is but it's a hole in this church it scared the life out of me as did the nightmare but I didn't paint this. It's a photo. Um, this piece is called Cave Fish. And what it is, um, as a child, uh, we had a stock tank in this little farm in Texas. And that's where the horses and cows would go drink out of. And it was abandoned. And there were all these like translucent, weird um, crawdads or whatever was floating in and swimming in it. And... Uh, the water was dark and dirty, and um, I guess that's stuck in my subconscious, but there's a great poem by Jim Morrison where he says, In the womb we were all blind cave fish. And um, I don't know where my, uh, not I don't want to call it obsession, but I've always been interested in fish that live in dark places, completely darkness, and they generate their own light. Um, I guess there's some kind of metaphor in there maybe. I don't know, but... Um, it's hard to capture and paint, obviously, which I felt. Um, this is a copy of a Modigliani reclining nude from the Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan. I painted it for my ex-girlfriend. It's her favorite painting. Um, you learn a lot from copying other artists. And uh, it was a hard piece to copy, actually. And uh, she now owns the painting. And just another piece of mine, lost. <laughs> I feel like I've been through a divorce with all the uh, paintings I'm giving to exes. And, uh, but if they enjoy it, fine. Um, but he's an interesting guy. And, uh, uh, you know, he died young from drugs or something in Paris. But he knew Picasso. He was a very, very interesting guy. I like his work. I don't love it. I like it. And, uh, very talented for his age, definitely. And that's it. Uh, this piece is just a study I made. Um, a client of mine wanted to buy a painting of a uh, schooner in stormy seas. So this was a study I did before I painted the schooner. Um, the funny thing is, I like this piece, and uh, I don't even know where what happened to this piece, but... Uh, when I went and painted the schooner, the final piece, I just got too tight on the ocean. And that happens. Like you come out with these inspirational sketches or studies, and then when you go to the final piece, I overworked it, I think. I mean, it works as a painting, but it didn't have this loose energy. Um, I defined it too much, I think. But I didn't ruin it, but it just wasn't a... It's very hard to keep your spontaneity from an initial sketch or study into a final piece without overworking it or noodling it, as I call it. Um, um, this piece here is really hard for me to look at because um, I, when I was meeting a client who bought this painting, which I call the, the Underworld, um, I was with this beautiful girl, I met her in a restaurant, and she was picking up the painting, and um, she... Uh, I got a phone call while I was with her, and um, my father died right while I was in the bar. I got the phone call. Shattered me. So I've never been able to look at this painting since until now. Um, she was a great girl. I believe she got married. Uh, but, yeah, this painting uh, is a heavy one for me to look at. I think my dad went up to heaven. Hopefully not to this place. <laughs> But I think this is the first time I really looked at it since then. Um, but that was a strange uh, time marker. 
this piece is called The Deluge, and um, I'm so blind to my own work that I never realized most of my work has a biblical, like apocalyptic thing going on. I didn't realize it until a couple of years ago. It's like the old expression that you can't see your nose with your eyes, but it's the closest thing to your face, you know, so you're blind to your own work sometime. And uh, A magazine in Brazil found this picture online, and um, there were a ton of floods going on in Brazil, maybe Rio, or I don't know where it was. Um, and uh, they uh, asked to use this uh, piece, and they did. Is Rio in Brazil? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but this uh, is one of my uh, many flood paintings. I love floods and had a lot of them as a child in Texas. They stick with you. Um, this painting is uh, another thing that I've been preoccupied with for most of my life is whirlpools. And I figured that after the flood, where would the water go? It would have to go down into a whirlpool. Um, and I think a whirlpool has multiple meanings, you know, in life. and uh, Could be good or bad. <laughs> Probably more bad. And of all places, I think this is in the collection. I think Charlie Sheen owns this piece, who certainly went down a whirlpool of his own. Um, but... I just find it fascinating. Supposedly in certain places the water will spin the other way. I always think it goes that direction. Is that counterclockwise? Um, I don't know if that's true or not. In the South Pole. Who knows? Um, but this would be after the flood. Um, this piece I call the birth of liquid flight. Um, I think, sorry, the image is a little bit low res, but, uh, I had these visions of like uh, birds coming out of the water that were made of water. I, I don't know what that um, thing is in its mouth. Um, perhaps a black pearl. But um, yeah, they would escape um, the flood by flying. Um, I might do some more of these, find them interesting, but I don't know what they are. I don't know a lot of what I do. I just kind of let my rational mind um, sit on the back burner a bit. Um, so again, this is a birth of liquid flight. These water creatures that fly out of the water. Okay, this painting is an oil version of the flower of life. Um, I spent many, many an hour, like, scribing that thing with a compass, um, doing different versions on watercolor and oil of the flower of life. You really have to concentrate to do it, but it's a very meditative uh, thing to scribe out. Um, I don't even know if I can remember how to do that now, but that symbol has been around in multiple cultures that didn't have contact with each other at the same time, which I find fascinating. Um... I think geometry is kind of man's attempt to map out the universe a bit mathematically in a way that symbolically he can visualize the universe. Um, and I guess the Kabbalah tree of life comes out of that picture there. I don't mess around with that stuff. I know nothing about it, but um, I do love that symbol of the flower of life. Okay, this is an angel. I paint a lot of angels. Um, this was inspired by Leonardo da Vinci, one of my favorite painters of all time. And um, I kind of painted my ex-girlfriend's face from memory. Um, that's the one who I uh, gave the Modigliani to. This painting is in the possession of um, at Mariano Rivera, the... Um, Yankee. I do some charity work for him, and he's a very religious man. Um, really nice person. And again, this is in keeping with the, uh, you know, I guess the biblical religious aspect of my work, which I never really knew about or understood. <laughs> Wasn't conscious. Um, but uh, I like painting angels.